Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from ComputerGaga.com. In this video, we are going to look at how to create a dynamic rolling chart to show the last six months of data. So on my spreadsheet at the moment, I have a chart, a line graph in fact, that does just that. Although really, it may seem it's doing that but it's actually charting the range A9 to B14. That currently is the last six months of data, but when new months, new rows are added to the bottom of this table, or indeed it may be that data is removed from this table, that will not update until I manually edit the chart source. Now I wish to automate the chart so that it automatically rolls with time and picks up the last six months. Now to do this I need to create two dynamic named ranges. I'm going to create one to show the last six months of chart data and the second one for the last six months of dates or labels and then I'm going to get my chart to use those named ranges uh, for its own data therefore making it automatically rolled in. Now to create these dynamic ranges, I need to use a function called offset. When I'm beginning to type this function within the define name feature, it's going to appear quite small. So just before I do that, I wanted to type it onto a cell, so that especially if any of you watching this are new to this function, or maybe a bit rusty, you're reminded of what it does and what it looks like. So here is offset, returning a reference to range, the so given number of rows and columns from a reference, and an opening bracket. So let me walk you through what I'm going to get it to do, and then we'll do it, uh, using my chart data example. It's going to ask me for a starting reference. We're going to tell it to start from B1, the top of column B. It's going to ask how many rows to move. I'm going to say find the bottom. So essentially what I'm going to do is count everything in column B, therefore finding out how many rows there are, therefore finding the bottom. How many columns to move? None. I've already told it to be in column B, and that's the one I'm interested in. Height and width. For the height, I'm going to tell it to go back so that it gets the last six. So from that point, like go back six. And for the width, that will be one, because it's one column wide for the data. And I'm going to do something sort of similar for labels. Okay, so there are the five questions I'm about to answer. Let me come over there, move my chart back, and let's go for the formulas tab. So let me click somewhere on this sheet first. Formulas tab, define name. And I'll need to give it a name first of all. This one's for the chart data, so I'm going to call it chart data. Now there are some restrictions when naming ranges. Uh, the use of spaces is the biggest restriction, that's a no-no, but there are others. But, you know, Excel will tell you if there's an issue, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, but apart from those restrictions, you can call these range names whatever you want. You know, I'm calling it chart data. I, I don't want you to be misled and feel that you have to do that where it doesn't work. You can call it Billy, you know, Excel's not going to mind, it's not going to complain about that. It just may not make sense. Um, okay, apart from that, uh, comments, can't be bothered, but you type a nice comment there. And then it refers to range. This is where the offset function is coming in. Equals offset opening bracket. Right, can we remember those arguments? The first one was the reference. That's B1. I said it would be the first cell in there. Comma. Next question, how many rows to move? I'm going to use the count function, and I'm going to get it to count column B. Count all of column B. How much is in column B? Currently it's 14. Comma. How many columns shall I move? Uh, zero. Don't, don't move any columns. You're already in it. Comma. Um, the height of the range to return? Minus 6. Go back 6. Go up six rows. Comma, the width, one. One column wide. Close bracket. And I'll click OK. 
Now I should probably mention at this point, after creating that first named range, that in the link, sorry, in the description of this video, there will be a link to a blog post about what we're talking about right now, detailing the steps. And in that blog post will be the formulas. For example, the one I just wrote and the one to come. So you can always go in there, copy and paste these formulas, and then just tweak them to your own needs, where you might want not want the last six, you might want the last 10, or the last 24, or the last three. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Let's click Define Name, and this one's called Chart Labels. Once again, call them whatever you wish within the constraints of naming ranges. Chart Labels is not important. It's not a reserved word. And then, down here, I need another offset function. Now, this one is going to use the reference of the other defined name that we just did. And that is what I personally call chart data. So use chart data. Use that, that range, that reference, comma. Uh, remember this question is how many rows to move. I'm going to say none. Don't, don't move any rows, zero, comma. How many columns? I'm going to say minus one. So what I'm doing is I've already got something that finds the last six cells in cells. I'm just creating another one here to say, look, I just move one column to the left, and the equivalent over there is what I'm interested in. Let's create one there and call it chart labels. Okay, I'm going to click OK to that. So we now have the two named ranges. Now we need to get our chart to use them. I'm going to click on my chart. Click Design up under the Chart Tools ribbon and select Data. Now your Select Data button, or it may even be called something slightly different, may be elsewhere on this ribbon. Just bear that in mind. This is Excel 2013. That's the position of it here. It may be elsewhere for you. Once you've clicked it though, they pretty much look the same, apart from the, the tiniest of changes. And at the bottom we've got the Series box and the labels box. We need to get these two boxes to point to our two uh, dynamic defined names. Then we start by clicking edit on series. Series name, I'm going to click on cell B1. Take the name of the series from there, it is cells. Now in the example on my screen, I only have one data series, one line. So it's, it's a little bit redundant really, I don't really need to answer that. There's, there's no need to tell me what it is. But bearing in mind that you guys may have three, four, five series, uh, it will be important to name those. And you'll have a legend telling people what each series is. Otherwise, it won't be a very good chart. Uh, let's move to the next question. Now, I want to keep the sheet name, sheet one exclamation mark. Don't delete the exclamation mark. But I don't want their range. I'm going to use chart late, uh, sorry, chart data. I nearly told you wrong. So, to remind ourselves, chart data, the named range for the last six cells of B, the data to chart. Very important we keep the sheet name. Excel will moan and will not work if I do not put that sheet name there. Sheet name, range name. Click OK. Let's go and edit the labels. Similar story, let me get rid of that range. Not the sheet name though. Sheet one exclamation, chart labels. That's what this one was called. Click OK and click OK. And we are done. Nothing seems to change. But that's because it was already looking at the last six. Let's give it a trial run. Let me click in cell A15 and type in the data for June 16. And then let's say there was 25,000 of sales. Keep your eye on that chart. And see how it immediately, automatically moves to show the last six. Let me put another one. July 16. 45,000. And see it's just moving along, automatically updating. And if I was to delete those two months again, Brings it back to May. So here we have a dynamic rolling chart, always capturing, always displaying the last six months of data. I hope you found this video useful. 
please check out some of our other videos on our YouTube channel or come check us out at computergaga.com.